let's take a look at some organic chemistry inside the human body. Look at these organic molecules. Largely what we're going to talk about are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And going back up here to the carbohydrates, look at what they're composed of. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's the three big components. You take those names of those three and run them together. That's pretty much where they got carbohydrate from. Now notice how they're divided into three major groups. Mono, di, and polysaccharides. Mono means one. Those are one simple sugar with nothing else combined with it. Disaccharides, two simple sugars there, and then the poly for three or more. Good example of carbs in the body are glucose. This is the form of carbohydrates that our cells need along with oxygen for energy production. So glucose, carbs, one example of it there. Good energy sources also provide structure. You look at something like a DNA molecule. Simple sugars make up a big part of them. Then we look at lipids, composed mostly of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Again, look how abundant those three elements are along with some others. Lipids generally are not soluble in water. They don't mix well with it. Everybody's heard that oil and water don't mix. You put a little bit of oil in a container of water, you can tell it doesn't mix together. The oil stays right there separate from it. It has to do with the type of chemical bonding that H makes each one of those materials. It's very different. Now, one thing about lipids we're going to see in future chapters is that lipids will diffuse through cell membranes. Water-soluble molecules won't, but lipid-soluble will. That's going to be very important for many topics throughout this book. And this also explains why, like with a small child, if you give them paint to play with, you give them a water-based paint. That won't diffuse through the cell membranes and the cells in their hands if they get it all over them. But if you were to give them an oil-based paint, that lipid based would go through those cell membranes and enough of that could get into their tissues and blood to become toxic. So that's why you don't give them those type of plant paints to play with. Good example of lipids in the body are anabolic steroids. Everybody's heard of those right there. And some of the functions of lipids are protection, insulation, physiologic regulation, components of the cell membranes like a wall around the cell, and it's a very good energy source. More energy stored in one gram of lipids than any other organic molecule in the body. Proteins composed of carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. These are composed of different types of amino acids. Take any protein. It's just an assembly of different amino acids. There's 20 amino acids. You take them and put them together in different combinations and different lengths. You get an endless number of proteins. Insulin, very important hormone when it comes to blood sugar regulation. It's just one example of a protein-based chemical inside the body. So different functions, they'll regulate different processes in the body. Aid in transport, protection, muscle contraction, structure, energy production, you name it. Nucleic acids composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and a little bit of phosphorus. The good examples of these you heard of, DNA, maybe RNA, and also ATP. But going back to the carbs, again, we got the mono, di, and the poly. One, two, and then three or more simple sugars in each. So going back to the mono, again, those are the simple sugars. There are six carbon sugars like glucose, probably heard of that one before. Fructose found in fruits and galactose. Those are good dietary sources of simple sugars. There are five carbon sugars making very important parts and components of ATP, DNA, and RNA. It's big in their structure. Going down to the disaccharides, we see two simple sugars bound together by dehydration chemical reactions. Sucrose, lactose, and maltose are good examples of those. Lastly, we see polysaccharides. Again, these are many of the simple sugars chemically combined together. These are largely used as storage molecules. Glycogen is a great example. It's a big energy storage molecule. Right after fats and lipids, glycogen is the next best energy storage molecule in our body. A lot of that's found in your liver. Starch we see in food, often used as a source of monosaccharides, and cellulose, see a lot of that in cell walls and plants. Go to lipids or fats. These are ingested and broken down by hydrolysis chemical reactions. Most of the fats or lipids in the body were in the form of triglycerides. We'll see a lot more of those in a later chapter. These are composed of a glycerol and a fatty acid molecule. These form many different functions, protection, insulation, and a very good energy source are just a few of those. And often with the fats and lipids, you always hear about them being saturated or unsaturated. 
Really the big difference in these structures where they have a single covalent or a double covalent bond binding them together. Looking on at lipids and phospholipids, you're going to hear about these quite a bit when we look at cell membranes. Lipids make up almost half of the cell membrane of every cell in the body. Now, when we look at these phospholipids, you'll hear about how they have a polar and nonpolar end. And notice how the polar end is also called the hydrophilic. That means water-loving end. That's because the polar end of this phospholipid molecule will always face the water molecules. So when we look at a cell membrane, you'll see that these polar ends always face outwards, outside of the cell, the extracellular environment, or to the inside, intracellular environment. But this nonpolar end of that phospholipid molecule, also called the hydrophobic or water-fearing end, will never face the water. These little tail portions will face each other. You'll see that in chapter three when we get to the cell membrane. And that plasma membrane we'll look at quite a bit. It's neither rigid or static. In other words, it's not hard. It's not like a lip, like a liquid. It's somewhere in between. Gives a good structure, but always changing. So these lipids have very important functions. They're important structural components of cell membranes, many other things too. Look at another group of lipids, steroids here. A lot of people think steroids are just something to make your muscles grow. No, that's testosterone. That's just one example of a steroid in the body. Steroids are carbon atoms arranged into a characteristic four ring structure. So cholesterol, bile salts, estrogen and testosterone are just a few of the common examples. These have some important functions, physiological reactors. These are a lot of hormones and such and components of cell membranes too. Down here, you can see some of those like fat-soluble vitamins. We'll get to more of those further along in other chapters. Back to proteins. Remember, every one of them is just an assembly of 20 different types of amino acids. You don't have all 20 amino acids in any individual protein. Take these amino acids, put them in different combinations, in different lengths. An endless number of proteins can be made. And these peptide bonds, which are covalent bonds in between the individual amino acids, or what bind and hold those amino acids together, and that's what makes these big protein chains. And you can see that protein structures come in four different forms. There's a primary, a secondary, a tertiary, and a quaternary, which is the most complex of them all. Last, we see enzymes here. Enzymes are very important proteins in the body. Reason being, these enzymes do two very important th things. They lower activation energy, and they speed up chemical reactions. And when they talk about the first part, lowering activation energy, they make it so that you only have to put a small amount of energy into a chemical reaction to get it going. Without enzymes, you'd have to put so much energy into the reaction that you wouldn't get enough out of it to justify. It. So again, that's one reason they're very important, but they also speed up chemical reactions. Chemical reactions don't occur fast enough naturally to sustain life. So these enzymes speed them up, sometimes a million times faster. So that's very important. And if you see just about any word that ends in ACE, it's usually going to be an enzyme. And then lastly here, we see these nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. You'll hear about those throughout different chapters for many reasons. So if you look at these individual nucleotides, you'll see five carbon sugars, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate. And again, that includes the different nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, and also ATP, this big energy molecule inside of cells. You've all heard about this when you hear about genetics and genes and how information is passed from one generation to the next. We'll take a closer look at that in other places, especially in chapter three on the cell. But these are composed of two strands of nucleotides. Now, if you look at each nucleotide, it contains one of the organic bases, adenine or guanine, collectively those are what's called the purines, or thymine and cytosine, which those are collectively called the pyrimidines. And when you look at it compared to RNA, they're very similar. Look down here at how these organic bases always pair up. Well, notice with DNA and RNA, cytosine and guanine always pair together. But with DNA, adenine pairs with thymine, and with RNA, adenine pairs with uracil. So the replacement of that thymine by uracil in the RNA 
is the big structural difference between the two. And we'll see these two working together with protein synthesis in chapter three. And then lastly here again, we got this ATP, this energy currency of the cell. Again, that ATP for sales powers what they do. It's like the gasoline for your car right there. Got to have that energy if you want those sales to do anything. So that provides energy for many chemical reactions. We'll see more of those. Muscle contractions, just one of them. And all energy requiring chemical reactions stop when there's no ATP. You don't have ATP in cells, they're going to die soon afterwards and you'll be in big trouble.